Hey everybody, it's time to upgrade the Shane Flynn Outdoor All Electric Bass Boat. We're going to take the back end of this boat and convert it from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system where I can install a brand new all electric outboard at 48 volts on the back of this boat to get some more speed. Stay tuned, I'm going to take you through all the steps I had to go through to convert from 12 to 24 and get that 48 volt motor running on this boat and getting across the lake. Stay tuned. Chain Flynn Outdoors brought to you by Omnia Fishing. Experience the most personalized tackle shopping on earth. And by MMA Fishing. Fight the bite. And by Lead Time Batteries. The ultimate power solution for your boating needs. What a big girl. So hey everybody, the first step I have to go through in converting this boat is getting all the 12 volt batteries out of here. So I have 400 amp hour uh, batteries back here already, lithium batteries. And I have a 12 volt four bank Nako charger that's down here that has to come out. So you gotta get all the 12 volt system out. This is my 36 volt trolling motor um, that I have. And if you're wondering where my NT300 was, well, unfortunately I got rear-ended by a car the other day and it got bent and it broke. And uh, actually, believe it or not, the thing still runs. Um, I went fishing with it anyway, but it's so bent, you can't fish with it. I really like that motor, it was a great, great motor, but the guy paid me Johnny on the spot for a new one. And I decided I'm gonna buy a new boat here pretty soon. And I want a 48 volt system. Instead of buying an NT300 and spending the money, just go ahead and invest in the 48 volt system now and switch it over to my new boat. And that's what we're gonna do. So all this has got to come out and I won't bore you with watching me take it all. I'll fast forward to do this and I'll talk to you about the batteries that I'm putting in here. In just a moment, I'll explain why I can't use the 100 amp hour batteries that I have in the back to run the new motor. So something that uh, I don't really talk about too much, but it's kind of important, especially when you're running with lithium batteries, is you always want to have a kill switch from any of your components going to your lithium batteries. I've been working with lithium batteries now for a couple of years, and if you don't have a kill switch, sometimes things will continue to drain on your batteries, which is not good for lithium, especially when you're trying to charge them. So I have a kill switch and I'll have the same thing on my ne next motor. I'll just have to find a new place to mount this kill switch. But uh, you want to have a kill switch or if not, just completely unplug um, whatever component that's plugged into your lithium battery setup. Um, I think it's just a smart thing to do. I do it up on front. I've got three batteries up front and I have a kill switch for all that, my front trolling motor and my accessories. So you always want to make sure you have a kill switch, um, especially when you're running with lithium. So I could use the 100 amp hour batteries that I have, four of them in, pair, in series to make 48 volts. But the new motor, which is 14 horsepower, requires 130 amps continuous to come from the batteries. These 100 amp hour batteries can only push out 100 amps per hour continuously. So that's why the battery change. So here's the, my uh, four bank 12 volt uh, battery charger for uh, 400 amp hour batteries I had back here. Um, Really great chargers, really happy with it. Um, not gonna have, I'm gonna need this in my new boat. I will be putting a three bank back here because I'm gonna sell three of the lithium batteries when I sell this boat, but Nako chargers do a really good job automatically detect lithium or lead acid, really great chargers. Finally got everything out. I need to clean it up a little bit and then we'll get started on the new stuff. All right, folks, this is our 24 volt, 230 amp hour lie time battery. Uh, lie time or lee time. Lee time is a supporter of Shane Flynn Outdoors. Great batteries, I've been using these for years, never had a problem with them, very dependable. Um, they're very well priced and they get great customer service. And if you want one of these batteries, you can get 8% off at checkout with discount code Shane Flint, all one word, no space, and you get 8% off from lead time. That's part of their sponsorship to our channel. Um, it's a discount there on their batteries. Now, 230 amp hours is a lot of amp hours, you might be thinking. And I've gone through the math several times and which motor that I wanted to go to. I was really considering a 20 horsepower motor, but I went with the 14 horsepower, which you see here in a little bit. The reason is you got to have a lot of amp hours because they pull a lot of amps. So the 14 uh, horse that we have pulls 130 amps an hour at full throttle. The 20 horsepower, which will go about a mile per two, mile, two miles per hour faster than the 14, pulls 200 amp hours. Now, I wanted endurance. I want speed, but I also want endurance. I want to be able to go for about two hours uh, full throttle or close to full throttle. 
with 230 amp hours, I get about an hour and 50 minutes of full, hour and 47 minutes of full throttle power on these 230 amp hour batteries. Now, downside to these batteries, heavy. <laughs> Even though this is a lithium battery, it's 230 amp hours, it's 86 pounds. <laughs> you probably struggle seeing me putting it up here. Really uh, heavy battery. So gonna get them back here, gonna get them secure, and then I'm gonna get the charges on there. I won't bore you with uh, going through it step by step, but basically we're gonna strap down these batteries, get them secure, and get the battery chargers mounted here, which I'll bring out and talk about in just a few minutes. All right, folks, so got the first battery in here, and what I did is I found some old, some gym matting that I had in the house and put a mat down on the bottom to help, uh, you know, the battery not slide around, and I want to put a spacer in the back where it don't rub up against the back, and plus, when I mount this charger, I want the charger to have a little bit of room where the cords can hang down behind, so have a little spacer in there. I got two straps, one underneath the brace and one forward, you can see here, two straps holding it together, keeping it secure. So I got the batteries in, secure, and now the chargers. And you can see these are connected to the chargers by the just regular Anderson connectors. So let's go ahead and get the second battery in and secure it, and I'll get the, get the uh, battery chargers mounted, and then it'll be time for the motor. Man, it's hot out here. I did not think it'd be that hot today. Um, it's the 14th of September, and I guess it's about 82 degrees outside, so no wonder I'm sweating so much. All right, let's get the work done. Almost there. All right, folks. So uh, I got both 24 volt lithium uh, battery chargers in here. Now these are ch uh, charged at 20 amps an hour. Again, these are exterior waterproof for being outside. You can see the connect with Anderson, Coop, uh, Anderson connectors. So we have got batteries, we've got chargers. I got tools everywhere. Um, I think it's time for the motor. Now, the one thing that I am not gonna mess with is I have a Nako charger. Typically when I come in, I have two plug-ins in my boat. One up there to charge all my batteries up front and one over here for charging the batteries in the back. Um, but what I've got here is I'm gonna have to do a little adapter. I don't wanna leave this door open. The plug-in is in there. And I'm not gonna modify this because like I said, I'm selling this boat and I want, it, I want all these hatches to be in good condition when I sell it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a power connector here, dual, and just set it back here where I can just plug it in. And there go my dogs. <laughs> hey, pooches, come here. So uh, that's, the, that's the only change that I'm gonna be making. I'm gonna go ahead and put those spacers back here where they, uh, where I can keep the batteries from touching the battery chargers and let's go get the motor. So you can see here's the motor. They shipped it out and they bring it out on a crate. Uh, they shipped it out, got here yesterday. I'm gonna open it up for you right here for the first time. I haven't opened it up yet. Let's see what it looks like. All right, there she is, 14 horsepower. Elko motor. I think it weighs about 70 something pounds. So I'm gonna be very careful here getting it out and uh, we're gonna get it right over to the boat. So next time you'll see it be sitting on the boat. So here it is folks on the boat, heavy. This is a two people lift. I barely got it up, but took everything I had to get it on here. Um, so I'm gonna get it tightened down. I'll get the connection kit on there and get all the parts on it. And the next time you see it, we'll be at the lake. I'm gonna hope we get eight and a half miles an hour on this. I got out of the NT300, got 5.2 miles per hour on the average. I'd like to get 8.5 average on this. We'll see how it does. We'll catch you out on the lake. See you in a few. All right, hey folks, we're out on the lake here. Got the Elko motor here, all fired up. Um, I, you know, I've been running around, making sure it works. It works great. Um, I will say up front, had a little bit of a problem. Uh, last night, when I put the throttle handle on, I put it on backwards. And when I did that, put, pulling the wrong way on the throttle cable, released the throttle cable from the handle. And uh, I was going crazy trying to figure out what the problem was, but I figured it out. And um, I got the throttle cable back into the wheel. Just took me a couple minutes to do it once I figured out what was wrong, but I put it in the wrong notch. There's two places to put the throttle cable. Here I point at it. Um, if you can see right here, I'm pointing, there's, there's a notch here and a notch here, and I put it in the wrong one. 
and uh, it's not letting me go to 100% throttle on it, which is okay. And the reason I know that is because the app that comes with Elko that reads your it's Bluetooth to your motor, it gave me the error code and let me know and said, hey, I'm going to email a technician to tell you how to fix it. Well, I kind of know already how to fix it, but, you know, pretty neat. The app uh, works really good, tells you how much run time you have, how much battery time you have. You can see it there. It's a pretty neat little app and uh, it tells you everything. So pretty impressed with it so far. Now, I'll get the throttle cable fixed, but I'll tell you what, let's run it. I run it like it, you can tell it's real windy out here today. I was running around seven miles, 7.1 miles per hour um, at 4,200 RPM, 6,000 RPMs is max speed. So let's see what we can, I'll demonstrate what we're doing here. So the Elko motor is really easy to use, right? And easy is the way I like it. So it's got two buttons. It's got a power button and a forward and reverse. All you have to do is turn on the power button and it clicks when the power's on and just go hit forward and then you just turn the handle like you do on your regular engine. We'll get it up to speed here. Right now we're at 3,800 RPMs and we're running at 6.7 miles per hour. I'll get it up, it'll get up to about 42 and that's when the, the throttle thing kicks off. And we're running about 7.1 we're running 7 .1 miles per hour right now according to the app and it's pretty close. Yep, pretty close. GPS is saying the same. So it runs pretty good. Does put out a pretty good wake, as you can see. And I'll turn the, to the front of the boat. I'll turn around to show the front of the boat. It's trying to plane out a little bit. Now we're not gonna get fast enough to plane this boat, but it sure the heck wants to. Now we do got more weight in the back, but the, the boat is not pushing water at the front of the boat like it did with the other motors. So much more efficient for sure. And we're running right now at right at seven miles per hour, 6.97. And I'm running at 4,200 RPM. So we got 1,800 more RPMs to go. So I'm sure I'll get to that eight or nine mile an hour mark once I get the, uh, the throttle cable back in the right throttle cable hole. Once I did get the throttle cable fixed, I did get up in the average around 8.5 miles per hour. Well, there you have it, folks. Motor's running really well, very impressed. We'll bring her down. Pretty impressive. Um, like I said, once I get the throttle cable issue taken care of, I know I'll get up to eight or nine, probably closer to nine miles per hour. Um, this thing moves out <laughs> with this motor, obviously. I went from 110 pounds of thrust to 270 pounds of thrust, so it should be a lot faster, right? Well, hey folks, I just wanted to do a little different type of video uh, versus just a fishing video. Uh, for all you electric John boaters out there that are thinking about upgrading to a, to a Elko motor, it's not that hard, three or four hours of work to take all the 12 volt stuff out. Like you've seen, I fast forwarded through everything, but it, it is much faster motor, obviously. Um, and uh, I'm pretty impressed. I think it's gonna work out. So now you have a video to look at to see how to go from 12 volt to 24 volt to run a 48 volt motor. Well, hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, tight lines and have fun fishing.